Suntem aici în dimineața aceasta pentru că Hristos a suferit, așa cum spune pasajul nostru în versetul 18, cel drept pentru cei nedrepti ca noi să fim aduși, să fim împăcați cu Dumnezeu. Și ceea ce se întâmplă în dimineața aceasta, în locul acesta, este ca și rezultat la ceea ce a făcut Isus Hristos. Este ca și rezultat al planului lui Dumnezeu care a vrut să ne mântuiască și ne-a dat harul acesta ca în ziua de astăzi să vedem 15 persoane care mărturisesc, care de fapt prin botez ei fac o declarație că ceva s-a întâmplat în viața lor, că Dumnezeu a făcut o transformare. Haideți ca să deschidem cuvântul lui Dumnezeu împreună. Let's open the word of God to this morning to 1 Peter chapter 3. And as we look at this passage, we realize that there are events in our life There are things that we observe with our human eyes, but those things that we observe, they speak of a reality that goes beyond the visible. They speak of a reality that has happened on the inside of us. And we make a confession. Today, these young people are making a confession in regards to something that happened on the inside. Baptism the confession that they're making is important. Even though the reality of salvation may have happened at some point in the past, what they're doing today is important because it validates their faith. They're saying, I love Jesus, I believe in God, I want to serve him for the rest of my life, but coming here today, they're making a declaration and a statement saying, I want to put action to my words. I'm not just a Christian somewhere in a closet. I want to serve the Lord and I want the world to see that. So baptism is important because you're making a declaration before God and before man. Hallelujah. And what I'd like to do today is I'd like for us to look at some truths in regards to baptism. Verse 21 says that baptism saves. And many of us would say, well, hang on a second. I thought that faith in Jesus Christ is what saves me. And that's true. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But in order for us to show that we are living for the Lord. God asks us to obey and to come before him, to come before the congregation and make this public statement. Baptism is an outward expression of an internal truth or reality. I profess with my mouth something that God has done and that is doing in my life. So this picture When someone goes into the water and then they come out, that's a picture of what God has done in their life. So let's look in the word of God this morning and let's talk about five truths that baptism communicates to us. Cinci adevăruri spirituale pe care botezul ni le comunică sau ni le arată. First, Baptism shows the power of God. Amen. Botezul arată puterea lui Dumnezeu. The book of 1 Peter was written to people that were persecuted for their faith. And Peter comes at the beginning of this letter and he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In other words, God has given us a new birth and he's given us a new hope in eternity. All these things happen how? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what happens in our life happened because of the greatest event in the history of humanity, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
And when we think about the events that took place spiritually in our life, we have to look at the resurrection. We get to our passage, 1 Peter 3 and verse 18, and when it talks about how Jesus suffered and he was just and he didn't deserve to die, but he did it to bring us to God, how did he do that? Verse 18 at the end of the verse says, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit through the resurrection. Baptism, as we come out of the water, we have died with Christ and we also rise with Christ. This symbolizes and shows us that resurrection is a powerful event. The resurrection of Christ wasn't just then and there, but through the resurrection of Christ across the centuries, millions of people have been resurrected to a new life that they live with the Lord. Amen. And then we get to verse 21 where it says that publicly we make a declaration. We give an answer of a good conscience. We say, I believe in God. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I want to serve him for the rest of my life. But do you know how you make this declaration? Look at the end of verse 21. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's the resurrection of Christ that gives your confession validity. It's what Christ has done. It's the power that raised Christ from the dead that gives power to the words that you're going to say today. Amen. You might be here today and you don't believe in the resurrection. But I want to tell you that the resurrection of Jesus Christ was the greatest event that happened in human history. And you are here this morning seeing the manifestation of the resurrection of Christ in the transformed lives of 15, 16 individuals that are ready to serve God. If back when Peter was speaking, People were ready to give their life, to suffer and be baptized, to be seen publicly, even though they might be put to death. Today, we're not put to death, but we're ready to make that same type of declaration. And we're only able to do that because of the power of God seen through the resurrection. So first, we see in baptism the power of God through the resurrection of Jesus. Secondly, baptism shows what God has done for us. Botezul arată ce Dumnezeu a făcut pentru noi. If we look in verse 18 of our passage, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. We see a few things that God has done for us in this passage. Jesus suffered for our sins. He did that for us. Jesus, who is just, died for the unjust. He gave us his justice, his righteousness, that he might bring us to God. What did he do for us? He brought us to God. Do you see how verse 18 basically has the gospel in that one verse? The gospel which says, I'm a sinner. I don't deserve to stand in the presence of God. I'm separated from God. And here comes Jesus who's just, who's perfect, who has no sin. And he makes the decision to die in my place. Me, who is unjust, who is impure, who is far away from God, who has rebelled against God. Jesus comes and he gives his life. A price has to be paid in order to be, for me to be reconciled with God. In order for me to be put together in this relationship with God, a price had to be paid. And Jesus the just and perfect, takes my place. 
I remember hearing a story about an older brother who was awakened at night from uh, his sleep by his younger brother who had just committed a crime, and he's got a bloodied shirt on, and without thinking too much, the older brother takes off his clean shirt and exchanges it with the dirty, bloodied shirt of his younger brother. And he goes to jail, and he has to pay the crime or the penalty for the crime of his brother. That's a picture of the gospel, and that's what God has done for us. Jesus took our dirty shirt, he took our sins, put them on himself, and he gave us his righteousness as we come before him in repentance, and he says, Father, look at them, not because of what they've done, but because of what I have done. The gospel is good news, and it can be good news for you today if you're willing to accept it. If you're willing to accept that you are a sinner, and that I, must, I am a sinner, that I'm imperfect, I'm unjust, but there is someone that is just and perfect that's willing to pay the price for my sin, a price that needed to be paid so that the wrath of God, the judgment of God, would not come upon me. Would you do that today? If you're here and you don't know the Lord, I want to tell you that in baptism, we get this image of what God has done for us. He's prepared a way. There's good news. There's the gospel of good news of Jesus Christ who has come. And the Bible says, he died, he was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures so that we might have life with him. Thirdly, baptism shows what God has done in us. So we saw what God has done for us. He took our place through Jesus, the gospel, the good news. And now we see that baptism shows what God has done in us. There's something that has happened on the inside of us. Potezul arată ce Dumnezeu a făcut în noi. 1 Peter 3.21, there's also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus. Through baptism, these young people are confessing that they have a clear conscience before God. But behind that clear conscience is a new life, is a new heart. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, he who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. So through baptism, we see that God has done something in us. As these individuals go into the water and they go down, they're showing that they have died to sin and they come out to a new life. And I guess the question I would ask this morning is, has Christ done a work in you? Can you see the fruit of the work of the salvation of the new life in your, in your life and in your circumstances? So how do I know that God is doing or has done a work in me? I'm willing to die. I'm willing to die to myself. I'm willing to die to the passions of the past. I'm willing to die to my old way of thinking and my words and my actions. So I'm putting some things away. Old things have been put away and all things have become new. And this newness is visible, number one, through faith. Do I believe that Christ has done, died for my sins? If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If faith is visible in my life, that's a sign that God has done a work in me. And finally, it's also visible through a life of obedience, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. 
Baptism shows God's work in me through the fact that I reject sin, I'm repulsed by sin, and I live in this new life that God has given me through repentance, through faith, through obedience. Do you believe that God can give you a new life? Maybe you haven't been in the church lately. Maybe you come from time to time. You hear a message. Maybe the word of the, God, uh, the, word of the Lord convicts you. Maybe God stirs your heart. But God doesn't want you to just be a participant. God doesn't want you to just be here to practice some sort of a religious ritual. God wants to do something in you. He wants to give you a new life, a new birth. He wants you to be his son or his daughter. He wants you to be in relationship with him. And that goes a long way. It doesn't take away all your pain and suffering. It doesn't take away the difficulties that you're going through, just like it didn't do that for the people that Peter was talking to. But it does give you a new perspective. It does give you a new hope. It gives you a reason to live life. It gives you joy that this world can't offer you. Are you willing to allow Christ to do this work in you? Fourthly, baptism shows what God is doing with us. Potezul arată ce Dumnezeu face cu noi. God's work in our life doesn't stop at conversion. You're getting baptized today. You don't just get baptized and then move on with your life and just live however you please. If we look in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, Jesus tells his disciples to go out and make more disciples. And he tells them, when you make disciples, do these two things. Baptize them and teach them to obey what I have commanded. You guys are doing the first step in the discipleship process. You're getting baptized. But then there's a continuation where God wants to continue to work in our lives as we learn to obey everything that he has commanded. And look what verse 20 of Matthew 28 says, and behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. In other words, you're on a journey and God's saying, I'm with you along this journey. I'm gonna continue with you. I'm going to help you through it the adversities, the difficulties that come in life, I'm going to use those because I want to work with you. Baptism shows what God is doing with us, what he's doing in our character and the development of our inner man, maturing us in the things of Christ. Today, you're being, you're here, you're making a public declaration you're doing it in front of God and in front of the church. And I would like to challenge you. If you're doing something in front of the congregation, but as you leave here, allow the church to be a vessel in God's hands that continues to walk with you in the process of maturity. This is just the beginning and your responsibility is to continue to live for the Lord, to be faithful to him, and to be a part of a body that can help you in this process. If we look in Ephesians chapter 4, we see that Paul tells the Ephesians that God has given the church and the different gifts in the church for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. In other words, in the church, God is walking with you in order to equip you, to give you certain tools to do his work. In the church, God is walking with you so that you would edify others, so that you would come alongside of others, so that you would say a word of encouragement. In the church, God is walking with you so that you would mature in your faith and that you would come to be 
a spiritual adult, not just a child in the faith. And lastly, baptism shows what God is doing through us. Today, these young people are making a public declaration, and if there are people here that don't know the Lord, God uses their declaration for you in the audience to hear that these ambassadors are now representing Christ, that they stand for biblical truth and that they will represent Jesus everywhere they go. They're representing Jesus at their work. They're representing Jesus at their school. In everything that they do, they are ambassadors that represent Christ. So Jesus, through baptism, through this imagery, he wants to tell us that we are now ambassadors for him. And just a few verses before our passage, in 1 Peter 3.15, Peter says, Be ready to give an answer for your hope to anyone that asks. So from this point forward, if anyone asks you, you have a responsibility to tell why you're a Christian, why you have a hope in Jesus Christ and in eternity. Baptism is an outward expression of an inner work that God has done and that he continues to do in our lives. God's power through the resurrection of Jesus Christ is visible in baptism. What God has done for us through the gospel and the message of the gospel is visible in the baptism. What God has done in us as he's brought a new life and transformation is visible in baptism. What God is doing with us as we continue to grow in our faith is visible starting from baptism. And finally, what God is doing through us is visible as you make the declaration that you want to serve the Lord. May God help us to continue to be committed to him and allow him to do his work in each one of us. Amen.